I'll receive these two boxes from Vivor. Here we have a manual extractor, and here we have an electric powered extractor. So I wanna do a comparison using both of these. We're gonna break them out of the boxes, look and see how they're packaged. Then we're gonna actually go in the garage and extract some honey and see how they work. Looks like we have a honey gate. We got the crank for the hand crank on the manual extractor. Got some different bolts. So we got some legs over here. Let's go ahead and pull those out. There's the extractor. Looks like it's all in there. We just gotta add the legs and the hand crank. Looks like this comes off pretty easily right here. This lifts off. The cage comes out. This is for the honey frames. Okay, and here we have the protective coverings to put over the extractor while it's spinning. So we'll get the legs put on there, get everything put together, and then we'll go try it out. Okay, the honey gate looks pretty simple. It's pretty simple, you just stick it in here like this. Just screw it on there. The legs look pretty basic, you just, real basic, just take your washer, bolt. Well, of course, I'll use some pliers to tighten it up, up in the garage, but that's all there is to that. That's really easy, so there's three legs. This right here goes on, looks like real easy. It's got a little square there, you just stick it on there. You tighten this so it'll spin. And this right here obviously goes into the cage. There's a small ball bearing down in the bottom where the cage goes. We'll set the cage down in there. Very simple. Looks like we have room for four mediums or two deeps, or you could probably do two mediums and two deeps at the same time, maybe. Nice and snug. Then we have the covers for safety. So it just spins like this right here. So we'll try it out in a little bit. Okay, now let's do the electric extractor here. The legs are very similar. I mean, frankly, it looks pretty nice here. I'm gonna put a link in the description to both of these extractors, but I believe it's a, actually an eight frame extractor. I think, you put, I think you put four mediums in here radially and then four tangentially, or I believe you could put deeps in here, four deeps in here tangentially, like laying on their side like that. So, so the rod drops right down that hole like that so it can spin. And this is a little different of a setup here. This right here, these kind of fit down these grooves right here, and then you tighten it. Another feature is it has these little hinges here where we can attach the covers, the protective covers. If you look right here, it does have a speed adjuster so you can change the speed. We're gonna go do, uh, shoot some video with both the uh, manual and with the uh, uh, electrical powered motor extractor here and just kind of see how they work. Okay, here's the honey off of the uh, hives in the backyard, the Apame hives. We got uh, eight mediums of honey. Some of them aren't quite full, but they're pretty good. And then we have uh, six deep frames that we're also gonna test out. So here's the setup. It's a little manual extractor here, ready to go. We got a five gallon bucket here with a paint strainer in it. Another five gallon bucket here with a paint strainer in it and a comb capper. So combcapper.com. So this is kind of how we did it. Back in the day, we did thousands of pounds of honey this way. We had an old hand crank extractor kind of like this. But we're gonna go ahead and kind of go old school here while we test out this extractor and show you how it works. First frame of honey for the year. You just slide your knife up like this. I found these serrated knives work about as good as anything. You got us some kind of orange colored honey here that could be tallow. I got a little scratcher here if we need to kind of get a few areas we can scratch it like that. We also use pin rollers sometimes, but I'm not sure where my pin roller is. It might be down at our bigger facility. And you just flip a little out of practice using this thing, but then you just flip it around like this. This goes down that hole right there. You can go from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom like this. Use a little scratcher.
So you're gonna put, you typically want to put this end in the leading end, I believe. So we'll put it like this. Like I said, it's been a while since I've used an extractor of this type before. And I'm gonna do two mediums and two deeps and just see how it works. One issue is these things are so high right here that they hit this as they go around. And they're going fast. See, they hit it as they're going around. Do I try to figure out how to lower the whole rack down? Maybe there's a way to do it, but I can't figure out how to do it. So you just gotta be careful. And uh, with the handle on this side over here, though I switch sides, it seems like it's a little easier. It's still gonna walk. I don't know if it, it might just be because these frames are unevenly full of honey. Obviously to work better if it can bolt it to the floor. So anyway, there we go. Okay, just gonna let it do its thing. Hold it in place. Now we're gonna flip these around. You gotta flip them around on this particular type of extractor. They're pretty dry. You did a pretty good job spinning the honey out. Let's flip them around. It really is a super tight fit in here, so it's kind of tough to do that. It works, it's just kind of, you gotta probably get used to it. It's my first time using this extractor, so as I use it more, I'm sure I'll get better at it. There we go, just have to push it down a little better. You really have to stabilize it. Boy, it's... Oh, uh, it's just hitting. Okay, we took the mediums out. And when I went to take the deeps out, I realized I had not flipped one of the deeps over. And that's why it was bucking so bad. Uh, we flipped it over and just went ahead and spun it out. And you see how easy it's spinning now? So that was my bad. That was my fault. See, it's just totally even, totally balanced. Really not bucking at all significantly. So... The key is that you flip them all when you're gonna flip those uh, frames over. We're getting this figured out. I went and got some prettier combs. See how pretty and white this is? It's gonna be a lot better experience. See, look at this new fresh honey here on this beautiful white comb. This is some newer comb, I think, and that definitely came off of there easier. Now, these are all mediums. It's working nice and smooth now. They're all similar weight. Spinning it out. It, when I had it set up straight in there, it tilts back like this and it raises this up so it hits the edge here. So I actually tilted it like this right here, flute leaning this way towards the, to the top bars on the uh, frames. And as it spun, this one's actually broke when we had it the other way. As it spun, then it levels out and it doesn't hit it anymore. So just a few things you gotta play with to figure out how to use the thing. Okay, let's go ahead and check out this electric Vivor extractor. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on. You can gently ramp it up. It goes pretty fast. Very, pretty quiet actually. Now we screwed these covers on here. If you open them up, it automatically turns off as a safety feature. So we had to screw those on. As soon as you close it, it turns back on. So let's load these things up with some frames and see how it works. And we got four tangential and then four radial. We see how it works. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be better to try and do eight at a time or just to do four at a time. Hopefully I got them in there right. Uh, we're gonna let it go kind of slow here for a little while. It's on about 55 right now. Let's turn it up a little bit. 
Oh, starting to walk. These things always walk though. Every extractor I've ever had will walk. The bigger ones we use for our big harvests are bolted to the floor and you can bolt these to the floor as well. It's like it's working well. Just let it go for a minute. And turn it up a little more. It's walking pretty hard here. Uh, so I'm having to hold it down. It's bucking a little bit here. So I go till it evens up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to look in here and see. Quite a bit of honey down in the bottom. Now we have to go with these tangential frames and flip them over. Yeah, they're dry. They're pretty good. Looks good. That side is wet. That side is really dry. Did a good job. Got most of the honey out. I kind of like this little extractor. All right. Let's turn it back on again. I like the way you can adjust the speed as well fairly easily here. As the frames empty out, it should quit bucking as the weight balances off a little better. Since it's 70 right now, it's not bucking hardly at all. 85, it's on 100. I'm not having to do a whole lot. It's doing good. These frames are definitely clean of honey for the most part. Pretty dry. The radial ones, not as much. We might let them go a little bit longer. I'm gonna let it spin a little bit longer on the radial and just see if it spins it on out a little better. It makes sense that the tangential ones would do better the ones that are sideways because that force is just pushing it straight out. Whereas the ones that are at an angle like this, it, it's a little bit harder for it to spin out, I think. I don't know how fast it's going, but it's, it's doing the job. It's a pretty smooth machine. Okay, we're gonna open up the gate. Beautiful honey. Okay, we're gonna run one more load uh, for the video. These are deeps. I put four deeps in here. They fit in there uh, quite easily. And uh, I mainly just wanted to do this to see if it was powerful enough really to, to spin the honey out on these because they are quite heavy. I've got it on 60 now. It's a pretty heavy load, so we're just gonna let it spin a while. So far it's handling it just fine. We're at 100% on this first go around. I've let it go for a while. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. Then we'll flip them and see what happens. It's definitely handling the job okay so far. Okay, we're just about done with the deep frames. It's not even really walking at all now, which means it's pretty much shaking all the honey out of there, and the frames are about the same weight now. So. It seems to be doing a great job. After extracting some honey with both extractors, I definitely, I just gotta be honest, I prefer the, the motor extractor, the electric one. It seems to be working well. Uh, we've done a few uh, frames with each and it seems to do well. Handles both mediums and deeps. I do think I'm just gonna do four at a time though. I'm gonna do them tangentially, which means they're gonna be like this. It just seems to work better. I think overall time will be faster than trying to do radial and tangential. So we're just going to use four at a time. I think you can use eight. The manual extractor just seemed to have some issues. I uh, just, uh, the biggest issues with this thing that I could see were that the cage is just kind of high. So you got to be careful, make sure the frames are in the right so it doesn't hit this thing. You really can't hardly use the protecting covers because the frames hit the little stops as they go around. So it's kind of a, 
a difficult thing. There might be a way to move the cage down, and if so, I think it'll be fine. I just don't know how to do that. I think it would be a nice little extractor, except for those couple of problems. Overall, they're sufficient for a hobby beekeeper. I wouldn't recommend these if you're gonna have uh, quite a few colonies. If you wanna harvest a, a lot of honey, it's probably not the machine for you. But for a hobbyist beekeeper that's gonna, you know, got 10, 20 hives even, it probably will work out just fine. Once again, my recommendation between the two is this one. Positives uh, are they both spin quickly and extract the honey. Uh, this one has a smooth motor. It does both deeps and mediums. One other thing I don't really care about either one of them is that the honey gate is up above the bottom. And so there's probably a half inch or three quarters of an inch down there of honey that just kind of hangs out on the bottom. Some extractors I've used in the past spin the way you just have to tip it forward and the honey will come out. It's just a little more of an issue cleaning up, but it's not a huge deal. It's not a game changer. For a budget extractor, I'd recommend this one. This one, it does function, but it really just has a couple issues as far as I'm concerned. So uh, that's my little review of the Vivor extractors. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it was helpful. Y'all take care and we'll catch you on the next one.